Black Ops 6 is now live for everyone in all regions, so while I'm on my way back from New Zealand, I wanted to talk through everything I found that has changed from the beta version of the game to its official launch. There's plenty of small tweaks, so let's jump right into it with one of the biggest updates highlighted in their recent blog post, the adjustment to aim assist. During the beta, aim assist was nerfed in close quarter combat, so if you were too close to an enemy, aim assist would cut off completely. Specifically, the slow down cut off at 2 meters, and the rotational aim assist disappeared at around 2.8 meters. After gathering feedback, Treyarch have adjusted this nerf. Instead of the sharp cutoff where aim assist abruptly stopped, they've now made the transition more gradual and less janky. Aim assist is still weak up close compared to previous Call of Duty games, but it's now present even at point blank range. And for my testing, it still feels less effective in tight encounters, but the strength increases the farther away you are from your target. And while I'm not sure the exact range where full aim assist kicks in, the transition feels much, much smoother than it did in the beta. And after several hours of play, I've noticed aim assist does feel weaker, even in engagements of around 10 meters, which is common for close quarter combat in a Call of Duty game. Despite this, I am definitely on board with the change. It feels more balanced and natural, and it also helps increase the skill gap for controller players in close range scenarios. As for how this affects keyboard and mouse users, it's still way too early to tell, but I'm definitely fine with how it plays out so far. Another change from the beta to the launch involves the speed at which you can swap between pistols and melee weapons. While I don't have the exact pre-patch data, the post-launch experience feels much smoother and matches the game's fast pace better. In beta, switching to a pistol felt sluggish, but now it's far more natural. The same goes for melee attacks, which are noticeably quicker after launch. Sledgehammer also addressed weapon sway and movement when aiming down sights in the blog post. Last year, Modern Warfare 3 had similar issues, which Sledgehammer then ended up fixing, but those fixes didn't automatically carry over to Black Ops 6, so Treyarch are gonna have to tackle them head on separately. They've made improvements to weapon handling, though more tweaks are expected in the near future. Notably, these changes don't seem to affect sniper rifles though, which still shows them initial point of aim drift when aiming down sight. Whether this is intentional to keep quick scoping in check remains to be seen. Another subtle but nice improvement from beta to launch is the depth of field adjustment across all weapons. In the beta, parts of guns, particularly the front sight, were often out of focus when aiming down sights and really blurry. This has been fixed and now the entire gun, especially the front sight, is sharp and clear. For those of you who didn't like the corner slicing mechanic where your character leans slightly when aiming around a corner, there's now an option to turn this off. Interestingly though, whether you have it on or off doesn't actually affect how much of your character model is visible to enemies, as corner slicing only impacts the first person perspective. Another useful addition is the option to adjust the whole time for diving or sliding. You can set this to short, medium or long depending on your preference. Personally, I'll be setting mine to long to avoid any accidental dives while I just want to slide. They also added an option to fine tune the angle for mantle assist, allowing you to set how directly you need to face an object to climb over it. On the map side of things, there were quite a few changes to the maps we played during the beta. For example, on Skyline, they've added more cover around the B domination point by the Jacuzzi, which will make it much easier to defend and get this point. Along the hallway of death, some cover at both ends has been added, which could potentially help you or just cause another head glitch problem. There's also an AC unit being added to this little corner area, where before I would die countless times vaulting over the wall to get here, so this is a very welcome change. And on this spawn site, they've added some more flower beds again, just giving you more protection, which is nice. On Scud, with this part of the satellite, you can see they've added some extra protection to stop the bullet penetration as much. While in the main satellite area, they've removed some of the protection so that it should be easy to get people off who are abusing the head glitch. They've also added a big sandbag of sorts down this lane too, so when coming around the corner you're not instantly in the enemy's line of sight. And on rewind, they've added a car to this spawn or domination flag point, again offering a small bit of extra cover. They've rotated this truck to change the line of sight down this long alley, and they've also added these wooden pallets by the big lorry and another wooden box at this domination flag site. There were also a few small changes to some of the other maps we got to play during the beta, like on Derelict they've added this blue barrel again on a high traffic area by domination flag providing some much needed cover. Overall these changes to the maps have played out pretty well in my opinion and I hope they continue to take on the feedback. One thing that wasn't heavily covered in the blog post but is definitely worth mentioning is the change to headshot multipliers for assault rifles. In the beta, headshots had a very minimal impact, but now they can reduce the number of shots needed to kill when mixed with body shots. SMGs, however, remain largely unaffected by headshots unless you're using specific attachments like the CHF barrel. So that's it for this video. I just sort of wanted to go through some of the key changes that stand out for me, but overall, Black Ops 6 is actually feeling much more refined at launch than it did during the beta. Obviously, it's still very early days. The weekend hasn't fully kicked off yet, 
but I am excited to see how things evolve from here as we move forward. Make sure you let me know your thoughts and be sure to like and subscribe as I'm pushing towards 3,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And as always, I hope you all had a wonderful day.